This is Star Traders Frontiers, and it is one of the more complicated games that I have tried in recent years. Uh, this was recommended by viewer Dr. Lackenstein, who has not yet shown up in the chat, but I hope he has time to come by while I'm trying out the game that he recommended. Uh, basically, I've been actually wanting a game like this for quite some time. It's a game that simulates you as an independent starship owner who's traveling from st system to system trading and you know trying to influence the diplomatic situation it, it's got a lot of layers to it and a lot of it is actually stuff that uh, you're not even meant to really deeply engage with it just makes the world feel deeper and and i don't know more detailed in the background we'll, we'll, we'll get into the some of the details of that as we go for right now just to kick us off let's have a look at our missions so I have been playing uh, with this cap. You can make, you know, a bunch of separate parallel games if you want to in different parallel universes. Uh, I've made one. Uh, this is just my first mission where I am trying. I'm, I'm assuming that this set of missions comes up for everyone, but I don't really know since I've only played one game. But I've been chasing down this um, this storyline where Prince Galligan Fayan a Calligan fan, uh, and his sister Valencia have enlisted us uh, to try to protect her from a court case. This universe has got kind of like a neo-feudal sort of government with different like great houses controlling multiple star systems each and competing with each other for, you know, dominance out here uh, in the galaxy. And so there's this rival house that has accused Valencia of c committing a terrorist atrocity. Uh, and she says that she's innocent, that actually someone uh, stowed away or somehow secreted themselves inside of her crew and uh, performed the act without her knowledge. Uh, but the, the evidence against her is damning, so I've been working for her family to try to clear her name and to try to, you know, delay the court case. And it's complicated, and there's just a lot of text and a lot of lore, and it's a little bit more than I can fully follow. But let's pick one of these missions to go on, whether we understand it or not. So, um, this is one I think was given to us Okay, by Prince Calligan Fayan. And it says, It seems that the Hunna Collective knows a secret that Valencia, Valencia Fayan needs. Is there a traitor inside the Fayan court? The revolutionary warlord Badu Jack may be the only one with the answer, and for it, we must seek him out. So, there's a series of steps in this mission. I don't know what all of them are, but the first one is, as an offer of truce, Valencia wants us to deliver a sealed case to a Hunna agent she knows, who operates on Voidbeard's Landing. By the way, Voidbeard? I, I hope that's the name of a space pirate. Uh, whatever is in the case is not clear, but it must be valuable enough to get Hunna's attention, and illegal enough that it must be kept away from the authorities. Okay, so I'm going to do the first step of this mission. I'll hit Waypoint, and that places a waypoint on the map. And it looks like, okay, it's a couple of jumps away, so I'm going to be heading into this jump gate wormhole thing with my ship. So let's right click and go this direction. Red of Court asks, do I know if Valencia is actually innocent or does she just claim to be? So all I know is what she's told me. So she says she's innocent and that's what I've decided to tentatively accept as her employee. Um, okay, so we've encountered a ship and my options are to fight or surrender to looting. Now to figure out whether I should fight, let's look at this ship report. So it looks like, okay, so my accuracy outclasses them, my ability, my maneuverability basically outclasses this ship. A lot of, of other stuff is fair to Midland, so I'm not sure, and our escape ability is closely matched, so they might be able to keep me from escaping. Uh, one thing I'm not sure of, I'm not carrying any cargo right now, so it might be that surrendering to looting might be fine, because I don't have anything, or we could do a fight. Let me... I never actually tried surrender surrendering to looting. Let me see what happens if I do this. Um, oh, they might take mission items, passengers, or prisoners. So I'm not dead certain what I have in, in, on the way of passengers or prisoners. I don't think I've got any prisoners, and I don't think I have any passengers, but I might. And this seems like the kind of world where they're happy to have you mess up a mission. They probably won't protect mission stuff. So let's actually try fighting instead, but if it looks bad, I'll try to escape. So this is how fights play out. Uh, we've got me on the left, the enemy on the right, and each turn I decide which weapons I'm going to use uh, and which talents I'm going to use uh, to try to turn things in my favor. So let's start out. I can So I've got four weapons here. Two of them, however, need me to be closer to the enemy in order to fire them. So often, what I'll do if I if I think I've got a really good chance, I will probably I'll usually advance 
so I can get more of my weapons within range. Right now, though, because I'm not sure if I want to, like, beat them or escape, what I'll do instead is just fire with these two weapons and also use one of my talents, like evasive maneuvers to try to avoid their shots. So let's see how this first turn plays out. So I'm shooting them, doing a bunch of damage. They're shooting me, doing less damage, and they want to close range. Okay, so that's making me feel a little bit safer. So right now I could use a special talent and try to escape, but because that first round went well, I'm inclined to try to advance on them, which takes four of my reactor points, and then keep firing with my more damaging weapon. I can't Because I'm advancing, that takes up uh, some of my reactor points, so I can't fire with all my weapons. But since they're trying to advance on me too, we'll probably succeed. If we both try to advance, we succeed. If one of us is trying not to advance, then it's like a skill check, whether or not. Okay, so this time they hit me and I missed them. So this might not be the best thing. So let me try another talent to try to increase my accuracy. So by the way, all of these talents, these are different talents that my crew members have. So as I level up my crew, this tray gets way more full, right? Uh, originally, I only had two items on this tray, but uh, but as we as we sort of develop the crew, all of my options get more advanced. So now I'm going to fire all three of my weapons. He's using evasive maneuvers, not paying off. We're still hitting him because of our, okay, yeah, because of our abilities. So he's trying to still advance. And so he must have weapons that will be brought to bear if he gets closer. If I get closer, these weapons will become usable, but some of my longer range weapons won't, so it's kind of six of one, half a dozen of the other for me. I think that I can do slightly more damage that way, but I think I'm comfortable at the range I'm at. So let's again use all our weapons here, and then... Now these talents, they'll have a cooldown on them that might actually last until the next battle. So if I use them constantly, um, then, you know, I could end up at a disadvantage in the next battle. But I think it's worth it to not just lose a battle as the very first thing we do in this video. Okay, so we've definitely got an advantage over these guys. I'm not going to bother with a talent this turn. I'm just going to keep blasting them with all of our weapons. So if this had started going badly for me, and I am taking some damage, but if it was if it was going significantly worse for me than them, then I would be trying to retreat and uh, get out of here, uh, you know, and, and, and survive. And that's often what I do when I'm against uh, unbeatable odds. But it looks like I've got a pretty significant advantage. So it looks like that accuracy advantage that I noticed up front is, is stronger than I actually anticipated it being. Like I'm hitting with almost all of my shots and they're missing with almost all of theirs. So even though they might have weapons that do a lot of damage, it's not really mattering to them. See, and now they're trying to retreat uh, and it's showing that there's a skill roll that they're failing uh, because whatever, my maneuverability or whatever is better than theirs. And we busted them up. Ship is gone. So sometimes uh, you actually sa can save the ship intact. Like, like you can win, but the ship is still in, in not in pieces. Okay, so we've just salvaged them. Um, and that's uh, we got some experience, and we're going to leave. So let's have a look at our crew. So this is our crew. So all of those talents that I was using in combat was coming from this crew and from gaining that experience, several of them have now leveled up, including my captain. So here's my captain. This is Captain, uh, what was her name? Pegaton, something like that. It was a randomly generated name. Pegason. Captain Pegason. It was a randomly generated name. Um, and it looks like training jobs is the option that's up for me. So she, I, I set her, there's a different types of captains. I set her up as an explorer. So if I train her continuously as an explorer, I keep getting levels up to her skill. So I'll get a plus seven explorer, plus four electronics, plus two tactics. All of these like um, skill ranks uh, help with just random roles during the game. And they do their best to sort of like, y you get to make these decisions about, you know, how you're going to level up your character. This is my, me leveling up my doctor. Uh, this is me leveling up my engineer. Uh, and so there's different you know, events on the ship that will go better because these skill rolls on these characters are better. Um, I can also, by the way, if I don't care, I can just hit auto train and it will just train all of the crew with reasonable stuff. Um, however, I think your officers, you always have to train manually. 
So, okay, so there's a Quartermaster. Okay, yeah, so my character's leveled up, and so basically, uh, throughout the game, you, you might have noticed during that combat, like, the enemy would try to escape but they would their role would be less than mine and so i'd i'd be able to hold on to them somebody on my crew has got a skill that we're rolling against to determine whether or not they can escape so keeping my crew alive leveling them up and keeping them on the ship is one of my more valuable things and you'll notice actually down below me here um there's this uh series there's this event log that happens as we travel around you'll notice little events popping up like avoided comet that is, again, constant skill rolls going on with my crew. And you don't have to pay attention to most of these events. What they do is they cause attrition to your ship. Over time, events will happen in the background, and you can pay attention to them or not. But your, your crew is constantly making skill rolls against like negative events. And when a, when a, when a negative event happens, uh, it costs something to your ship. Either it costs resources or it does damage to the ship, wounds the crew, morale hits, that sort of thing. And whenever you get back to a, um, to a port, you can try to alleviate those problems. And so the more skilled a crew you have, the fewer problems you have to deal with, the more profitable your journeys can be. So we're going to uh, go to, yeah, we're just going to do a little jump here. The map is sort of divided up into these, like, sectors that are connected by these jump gates. And then whenever you have a mission, it'll just give you waypoints that tell you, you know, go from this jump gate to this jump gate, that jump gate to that jump gate. Now, down at the bottom here is our fuel gauge. And so I don't want our fuel gauge to get too low, and each jump also takes a bunch of fuel. But let's look at this place, Hagathrun's ha Haven. This place does allow you to refuel. So rather than going straight to the next jump gate, I'm actually going to go over here and refuel before we continue on. And again, you can see we've got these other, um, you know, these events happening. A safe and efficient work shift. Avoided an airlock accident. The void reactor containment field maintained. All of these are events that could have gone badly, except my crew has good skills. And so, you know, they're overcoming them. Uh, so this is Zerkrom Prime. Uh, we're going to land here. And you can see I've got a bunch of options here. So I can refuel. I can buy more fuel for this fuel gauge. So that'll cost me 306 credits. So I bought that. Uh, medical services for 21 crew denied. So I've got 21 crew who would benefit from medical services, but this place doesn't provide them, at least to me. Uh, I can pay my crew their wages, which is nice. And then I can give them leave. It's called spice leave. Basically, I, I let them go get drunk. So I click that a couple of times. Some time passes, and my morale and my crew gets better. Uh, it looks like I've got um, broken components on my ship from the fight, so I'll repair those for 2,000. You can see my credits down here in the bottom left corner. I make money whenever I complete missions and also when I sell things. Um, but So I'm trying to keep a nice little cushion of credits, but uh, that gets drained the more mistakes that I make. So let's actually look at buying cargo. So over here, basically what this shows us is uh, the average price across the entire universe of every, uh, of every you know, uh, commodity and then how much it could potentially be sold for if you find a good spot. So it'll, it'll rank everything based on their price. So if I'm buying, it'll say, okay, you can buy electronic components here at a really favorable price and probably sell them somewhere else at, uh, at uh, you know, one that is you know, favorable to you. Uh, but it looks like a lot of the stuff here is permit restricted, which means my relationship with this faction isn't good enough to let me buy special things from them. So the top legal thing that I can buy here is clothing. So if I click on clothing, it says this is in demand in population, mining, refinery, and luxury population zones. So I can fill my hold with clothing here and then go sell that clothing somewhere else. So population and lux population... I think are fairly common areas, and so I think it's probably a good idea for me to load up on these clothes. This isn't the best price I can get, or it would have, say A+, but it's a decent price. Um, and, and of course, you know, if I wanted to get something with a higher intrinsic price, I could make potentially a higher profit, like these water purifiers, for instance, have got a higher intrinsic price, so the profit margin is probably bigger if I can find a, better, a good, play, favorable place to sell them. But the price isn't as locally good here. It's B minus instead of B plus. So yeah, I'm just gonna fill my hold with clothes and basically become the sort of, I'm the, I'm the goodwill starship now. And we're gonna go out to the map and continue on our journey to that waypoint. So you can see my fuel gauge is full up now. 
but you can sort of see like the complexity that I'm talking about, right? Like there's like this massively complex world and they're trying to give me the information that I need to make simple good choices within this complex world. But you can just tell that there is like between like the little announcements of the little die rolls that are going on in the background, you can tell that it's much more complex than you can possibly wrap your head around. Like like if you just, you know, uh, let's let's make this jump then I'll look at the crew again. Okay, so we're here. We're trying to get to a pretty distant place up there. Uh, so I might want to make a pit stop along the way. But let's have a look at the crew. So this is a lot of people, right? Like, this is an awful lot of crew members. I can't possibly keep track of who all these people are. Every single one of them has got an array of skills and, you know, they've all been leveling up different degrees. They've all got these like, you know, unlockable special abilities that I can use in combat. They're all making a difference to how I succeed at, you know, at, at like these random roles that are going on in the background. There's all this furious activity going on underneath the surface, but I don't have to engage in all of it. Like this auto train button lets me just auto train most of the crew and not think about what their skills are, uh, if I don't want to. But if I do want to get into all the details and micromanage, I totally can. And that's, that's the thing that I think I like the most about this game, is that they give you this impression of a deeply complicated simulated world. And and it's genuine. They're not just faking it. or something, like, like It really is. They are, really are simulating a million things under the surface. But they don't make you deal with all of it up front. I was able to get into this game partly because... What they asked of me was actually something very simple and superficial, and then only as I get familiar with the game do I have to start worrying about the deeper questions. Oh, hey! Dr. Lockenstein just showed up in the chat. Hey there, Lockenstein. Thank you so much for recommending this game. I'm having a fun time with it. Um, so we haven't actually done that much because all I've been doing is sort of like traveling around and ranting. Uh, right now, I'm on a mission to try to further the interests of the uh, Fian family. Uh, to try to, you know, rescue Valencia from her uh, from her court case. I genuinely have no idea if this main storyline I'm following is always the main storyline, or if it changes every time. This definitely, this game gives me the vibe of a game that could have a lot of procedurally generated content, but since this is the first time I've played, I've got no idea whether, to, to what degree that's the case. Um, so I'd love to get some, if you've got information on, like, how this game actually works as you play multiple different game uh, sessions of it, or multiple different campaigns of it. I would love to know uh, sort of what the bigger picture is. So, okay, I keep hitting the wrong buttons. It's the left cl left clicking and dragging is how you navigate the map. Right clicking is how you go places. But because I play so many different games, I just keep forgetting what the controls are here. So, I am looking for a place that, okay, let's, let's look at our cargo. So we've got this clothing and we want to sell it. Um, and so pop, mining, refinery, and lux pop. That's where I want to be. Uh, and so we're going to look at these planets and see. So here we've got population, wilderness, high-tech industrial, mining. Okay, so let's let's go to this population center first and see if the people want to buy our clothing at a high price. If they do, we'll probably sell it. If not, we might go on to this mining area and see if they will they will buy. So let's go here let's sell cargo and see okay we can get a b plus price here and uh the profit we'll make is nine thousand credits which is pretty good and again i love that they are putting in all of the work to tell me what i'll get out of this they remember how much i bought this clothing for um and and so like so basically they know that this is how much money i'm gonna make if i sell this here precisely and so i could sell it here or i could hope that the mining colony will have a higher price um so let's let's actually just let's i'm gonna sell it here but let's let's go to the mining colony anyway and see if we if we messed up so this is 271 credits is what we're selling this for so we're gonna sell it all and we just made some money so you see we got 267,000 now instead of the 250 we had before so we're making money that's good Let's also uh, see if there's anything here to buy. Uh, they got, just got scrap at a average price. That's not really interesting. Let's heal our crew members at their medical facilities. Let's uh, fill up our fuel. Let's pay wages. And... Oh, by the way, I got some more people who have joined the chat since the last time I acknowledged anybody. Um, including Rosenberg and Bardic Angel and Jimmy Gibbs. So it's good to have all of you here. 
So uh, Jimmy Kipps suggests, uh, imagine that in State of Decay 2. What if you could fix morale problems by just sending out your crew, your people to get drunk? Uh, honestly, that's something I should keep in mind, probably. We do have a bunch of morale bonuses in the lounge, including ones that have to do with drinking. So if you do explore the morale options in State of Decay 2, there are options like that. Mostly because Brian Giammi, uh was in charge of that, and he loves to drink. So <laughs> this is the first thing he thought of for morale. Um, so... That's not an insult. He's a connoisseur of whiskeys. Like, he's he's serious about it. Um, so, okay. So, we're not going to buy any cargo here. And this was just a pit stop. So, uh, I'm happy to get out of here. Let's go over to this mining colony. What did we say? 271 was the price we got at that population center. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, no. A pirate. So, let's ha look at the ship report. Again, so we're, we're dominant in accuracy. Everything else is a little bit wishy-washy. I'm really not sure how happy we're going to be, but let's jump in there anyway. So like we did before, let's not advance yet. Let's try shooting at them and just see how the results play out. I'll try evasive maneuvers and they've got guided fire. So it looks like they can counter my evasive maneuvers. Okay. We're looking more evenly matched which makes me very, very nervous. So I'm going to try to escape and I'm going to use sharp steering, which makes my evasive, you know, attempts more successful. And I guess I'll keep firing because why not? And let's see what happens. So he hits me again. I hit him, but then I escaped. So, good. He was damaging me faster than I was damaging him. And so, this was going to go badly. It would have been very, very unlikely for me to get the upper hand. So, Dr. Lackenstein says, In the early game, sometimes it's just easier to let them board and loot, especially if you know you don't have anything that they can take. So, that was actually something I wasn't dead certain about. So, sometimes missions will put somebody, like, in one of your passenger spaces. And I'm not dead certain I don't have anybody in a passenger space from one of these ongoing missions. I don't think I do, but it makes me nervous, and I don't know of a good way to check whether or not I do. And so that's why I, I've been avoiding letting them loot, because I'm, I'm afraid of them messing up a mission. And because I've got that sharp steering talent, I'm usually pretty good of get, at getting out of a fight after it starts. But that is good advice. Like, if I did know that I definitely didn't have anything for them. Yeah, letting them on board and saying, see, we got nothing to steal, you idiots, uh, would probably be a good idea. All right, so we're going to land at the mining colony. Sometimes planets have multiple different zones on them that, uh, that offer different things. Uh, okay, they don't offer medical services. I can refuel here. I can repair here. I can pay wages. We can get drunk. I'm just going to keep getting drunk. Okay, there we go. And then let's... Oh, so wait. I want to look at... Oh, because my hold is empty, I can't see their prices. Well, let's view demand. Maybe that'll... Okay, yeah. Clothing. 166. Okay, yeah. So their, so their demand for clothing is not as good as it was at the population center. So I did make the right choice selling my stuff at the population center. Well, now, this is a mining colony. So they offer ore at a really favorable price. This is in demand in refinery zones. So I don't know if I'm going to go to a refinery zone anytime soon. And this is kind of, it's going to offer kind of a, a slim profit because just the price itself is so low. So I'm not sure this is a great idea. Raw spice though, that's got a higher price. It's not as favorable here, but it looks like I'm able to get it because I've got good relations with this faction. Um, it's like normally this would require a permit, but I don't need a permit because of my relationship with these people. And so... Uh, this might be more valuable if I could find a faction will despise traders permit would be required. Oh, oh, no, this is not because of my relationship. This is because this is an independent place. So I don't know if I've got a spice traders permit and I'm not sure where to see if I have a spice traders permit. How do I know? How do I know if I have a permit faction politics? Is that where I would, would see this? Um, we're a free trader. So maybe... Does that mean that I can sell spice? I'm really not sure. 
So Dr. Lackensy says, a lot of the really good players say that you should always be buying and selling. Yes, certainly that's that's what I've picked up, is that basically they give you so much information, which is really, like, there's a lot of arbitrage games out there where you just have, you're just like, it's just a lottery trying to figure out what was worth buying and selling. They give you enough tools here that you can make pretty decent choices, at least not disastrous choices all the time. Uh, and so, yeah, so buying and selling is a great way to sort of keep your bottom line going up all the time. So, yeah, so I'm not sure if I've got, like, so I've got a free trader license for Thulun, which uh, is, is sort of, the, the this is the main group that, there's a, there's a lot, you can see there's a lot of different clans and factions here. The Steel Song clan is the rivals of Thulun, so because I've been working for Thulun, for the Feyen family, um, the Steel Song clan hates my guts. Most people are pretty neutral. And it looks like, wait, Winning? Oh, wait a minute. The factions can be winning or losing? Or is it... Oh, wait, no. Or is this just... Oh, they're winning or losing conflicts with each other. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah. So I'm not sure if Free Trader gives me a permit to sell spice. I'll, I'll need to look into that next time I talk with my contacts. But you can... Okay, so like... I, I'm probably speaking... For people who don't know this game, I'm probably speaking just a ton of nonsense right now. Because this game is so freaking complicated, but it's like, there's a lot of complicated games that have driven me away and made me just incapable of playing them. This one is not that. This one, like, I'm having fun with the complexity. And I think the difference is, because they keep giving me things that I can figure out how to do, that feel important. Like, I don't, I don't, like, a lot of times, to do something important, you have to actually fully understand all the complexities of a complicated game. And that becomes like a wall to your enjoyment. But this game does a good enough job of giving me things that I can definitely do, that I know will make a positive difference, will make my bottom line go up, that I can just keep doing those while I slowly ease myself into the more complicated bits. So yeah, Lockenstein says that, yeah, you can influence conflicts by helping their contacts. So like, because I've been helping the Thuloon people out that's probably contributing to them winning their 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 battles with steel song and if i keep serving them i can probably cause them to win which then i don't know i guess we'll have some kind of impact on the world ed blake says i never see colonies change hands between fa factions okay so yeah i guess it i don't yeah i don't know if they have like conflicts of conquest or if they just i don't know what kinds of how these conflicts resolve like like what the consequences of a resolution could be but okay so rather than rather than buying this which like uh, rather than getting this which is the, you know, the the highest stakes cargo or this which is the most advantageous cargo but at much lower stakes let me just grab this this is kind of in the middle it's definitely a great price lower stakes but it also can be sold in two different kinds of zones. It can be sold in refinery or industrial zones. So I'm going to purchase some hydrocarbon crude. And then let's continue on to Voidbeard's Landing. And, oh, it's got a refinery. So this is actually might be a good place to sell the crude that I just got. Oh, Lockenstein is pointing out that I've got some crew that can train. That's true. I should probably do that to make myself more likely to uh, do well in these random uh, events. So, let's see. Who is it? Terence Kinsey. So, they can train a new... T oh, they can choose a new talent. So, they've already got Hotwire, which automatically passes a failed electronics test in any situation. Um, we could also give them Signature Jammer which masks the ship's signal to prevent identification. When ending a ship encounter in a draw, reduce the possible reputation loss. Okay, yeah, so I've, I've been in this situation. You like are trying to resolve a situation and encounter with another ship, but you could suffer reputation loss unless you can jam the signal and keep people from finding out what happened. So yeah, let's... Um, or is this one I've already got? Ah, okay, this is one I've already got. So I think I need to choose a different one. Um, learning rumors, remove a risk card in the black market. You know what? I haven't done black market stuff, but if I ever do, removing risk cards is actually a cool thing. I should find a place to do something with risk cards, actually, because that seems valuable. Um, okay, so we're at Voidbeard's Landing. Oops, I just, uh, dang it. I, I want to land again. I hit the wrong button. 
Hey, let's let's go here. There we go. Uh, okay, so I want to. I think that actually my mission is probably over here, not at the refinery. So let's go land at the refinery again. Let's uh, buy some fuel. Let's sell our cargo. So yeah, so the hydrocarbon crude, I'm going to make a thousand credits. Not too bad. And it looks like, oh, there's a contact here. Dalgit Aurelius, a spice trader. I wonder if I can become a spice trader because I talked to this guy. Trade permit. Okay, so gain the legal right to trade more restricted goods within Kadar exchanges. So if I purchase a spice trader permit, then I could buy spice. The thing that I couldn't do before. So yeah, let's totally buy that. It's pretty cheap. So we just spent a small amount of money, got a spice trader permit. And then does this guy have any missions for me? Okay. So I could ask this guy for a spice runner. Oh, he this is a spice runner. So what what enemy exactly? Who is their enemy? So this is saying it'll work against their enemy, but I don't know who their enemy is. Unless is this their enemy? I I don't know. I'll do a personal ask for a personal mission from them. Okay, so here's a mission that they're offering me. Oh, this is about exploring wilderness. And it's four jumps away. Decent pay. Yeah, let's accept this. Okay. So right now we're going to pursue the mission that we're on. But we could switch to this guy's mission at any time. And, and actually it's got some interesting stuff. So, um... Okay, so now... I want to go back out to orbit and then land here. Because I think this is where... I think this is where my mission was ending. Crimson Summit. Yes, as an offer of truce, Valencia wants us to deliver a sealed case to a HANA agent. So yeah, so let's go over here. So this is me landing on the planet that this mission is sending me to and doing something. So it says, as an offer of truce, Valencia wants us to deliver a sealed case to a HANA agent. Uh, who knows? Oh, right. So I'm basically trying to get help from from some underworld people to prove to like find the true culprit. Uh, of the terrorist attack that I'm defending Valencia against, uh, like the court case about. Um, and so if I do something for these underworld people, then they'll help us. Um, so we could try to sneak her collateral right past security. My quickness is good. My stealth skill exists. We could try a discreet bribe. My skills are not as good in that regard. Um, and we could do an attention-grabbing brawl. The threat of violence in the spice hall will draw the security forces' attention, and then we slip past. So my tactic skill is good, my strength is good, and I've got a saving talent. So save. So remember that talent I bought that said it would like remove void card, like remove sorry, uh, like risk cards from events. We've got there are similar like talents you can buy that say give you like the chance to like if you do a bad roll in an event, it'll say never mind you got a good roll once and then a cooldown. And so let's do this one because I've got a saving talent and I've got the highest skill. So we're going to start a fight. And then I guess that got us to talk to somebody. So this is Orion Blair. Uh, greetings, Captain. The Hunter has heard a lot about you. It must not have been good considering how heavily armed your people are. We decided to be safe rather than proud. Let's get down to business. We've come on behalf of Valencia Fan to talk with Badu Jack. If something can't get worked out, it's likely the bombing of the Highwind Orbital will be pinned on the Hunna. Oh, veiled threats. We're going to get along great, Captain. Do you think having a lie pinned on us is something new for the Hunna Collective? Your princes and syndicates dump their bio-waste on our people any chance they get. We didn't come here to use these weapons. Very well, then. My name is Orion Blair, a field lieutenant with the Hunna. He has a sharp temper. If we want to meet Badu Jack, I need to cool this down. Valencia Fan set this locked case containing collateral that should make it clear how serious she is. She never fails to pay up front. I wouldn't expect anything less from Val at this point. What does that mean? He's worked with Val before? He's been paid by Val before? We'll talk more next time we meet. If you're serious, you're going to run an errand for us. Then we can talk about meeting Badu. Orion Blev had added another step to our mission. To earn a meeting with Badu Jack, we need to procure crystals and drop them at a wilderness stash. It seems the Hunt have hidden manufacturing plants that need supplies, and we need to gather them. Okay, so this gives a little summary of, like, you know, 
the dice that we rolled in order to succeed at things. And we just got paid 42k, so like our credits have gone way up. We gained reputation with Hana, we gained reputation with Callian Fan, Valencia's brother. And we lost rep with the Kadar Syndicate, who I guess those are the people that run this place, and we're meeting with the Underworld in their place. So let's set a waypoint. Let's also pay the wages and heal people and buy fuel and cargo. Biomass, really cheap, not going to worry about the cargo. Okay, so let me quickly catch up with the chat, because I think Lockenstein has actually said a lot that I missed. Let's see here. Um, so uh, Lockenstein says, most of the things that contacts offer uh, require personal rep, which is used like currency. Um, by the way, you can completely ignore the primary storyline if you want. I never do, because I hate not having any influence on what happens. Sometimes it can really suck, but the option is there. I, you know, I missed if you um, answered my question early on about... Uh, whether or not is it is, is the main mission always the same, Lachenstein, and just the outcome is determined by your interaction with it, or are there actually different main quests that can happen uh, in different playthroughs of the game? Um, with that question floating out there, let's have a look at the map. Uh, so it looks like they're sending me back through this gate. Now let's have a look at our missions right now, because... Okay, so internal pressure here, which is the one that I'm... Is this the one that I'm on? Or was it Crimson Summit? It was Crimson Summit. Yeah, this is where I'm trying to get the trust of Badu Jack, and that's going to take two jumps. But I'm curious, was Survey Tour, was this the one for the Spice Trader? Yeah, so this one's only one jump away to go to the Gaga Pass. And this is Exploring Wilderness, so that's something we haven't done before. So I actually, I think I want to follow the, follow the Survey Tour mission for a bit. You notice, by the way, um, let me look at back at the missions again. All of these missions have durations. You can see, like, this, like, and you have years to complete them. Now, time passes fairly quickly in this world. Years isn't a crazy amount of time. But you've got years to get it done. Um, and so you can sort of see which ones are more urgent and which ones aren't. And even if you, if you get them past their time limit, you can still complete them. I think there's just a penalty for doing them late. And so you can sort of set your expectations for, like, what's urgent and what's not by using these timers. So that, that's really helpful. Um, okay, so, looks like he's sending us all the way down here. Let's stop somewhere on the way. Uh, high-tech industrial, I might have some cool stuff to buy and sell. So, yeah, let's, uh, and, and then on the way, uh, also, there's a orbital station. Mining. And farming. Okay. So, let's head down this way. Again, you can see us succeeding like crazy at all of these random events. When you, when I first started the game and my crew wasn't leveled up, we were failing at these all the time. <laughs> just dealing with just just running the ship was uh, uh, was obnoxious. Okay, so we can fight this bounty hunter. We can submit to inspection, um, and actually submitting to inspection is fine. We we have permits for, or, or just we oh we don't have any cargo at all. So, yeah, let's just submit to inspection. They searched, and... Oh, we lost morale. So we gained experience, but uh, the crew wasn't really happy that I let a bunch of people on board. Understandable. All right, so let's land. Replenish our fuel and see what we can buy. Okay, so hydrogen fuel is really popular here, and you can sell it favorably at mining places and there is a mining place on our way uh it's kind of cheap luxury clothing is much more expensive it's legal with a permit but i think i've got the spice traders permit here so i can sell it and i can sell these on probably luxury pop is probably the best place to sell it i didn't see any luxury pop around here so i'm not dead certain that buying this is a good idea but it will be really profitable if I do get it. Okay, so Lock and Scene, by the way, the answer to my question. A lot of the big plot lines are the same every playthrough. The opposing factions can change, and there are plots that might or might not occur, but generally it's very similar. However, that said, sometimes little parts of the plot are different. You can't always say one guy is bad or good. There's a lot of gray area. Also, it depends on the roles and mission successes. 
Oh, so so like a lot. So there are certain plot lines that happen all the time. And is it like which which one is put in front of me immediately? Does that change? Um, and and then like there's details like depending on how they play out, they could like branch wildly in different directions. This makes me want to play this game multiple times just to see what the differences are. Okay, so I'm gonna, I don't know exactly where I can sell this, but I'm gonna take a risk and buy a ton of it. All I'm gonna just buy everything they've got because I'm an idiot. Um, and then I'm gonna fill the rest of my hold with hydrogen fuel because I know I can sell that close by. And then let's get out of here. So I know this place. Oh wait, it's an orbital station. I thought that that's farming. That's mining. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here just for fun and see if that hydrogen fuel can sell favorably here and if they've got something else here that's also worth grabbing so let's sell cargo so the hydrogen fuel not great I'll make a tiny profit on it but you know that that's fine let's see there's probably something here that I can get that's really good right I mean the hydrocarbon crude, refinery, industrial zones. That's worked for me before. Farming, refinery, industrial, orbital. Okay, orbital. There's an orbital place nearby. So let's buy these crystals. And pay off all the stuff. And then let's go over here. This place is orbital. So you can see me just doing these little tiny arbitrage things on the way. This is like, ooh, military officer. So we can just retreat. Yeah, I don't know what he's going to think about the stuff that I'm carrying, so I'm going to retreat. And I think that that took advantage of one of my talents. Okay, so let's go to the orbital station and see what we can sell. So yeah, the crystals, they like. So I'm going to sell those. I'm not going to sell the clothing. And then, oh, they've got even more luxury clothing. Nice. Okay, we've just got all the clothing we can possibly carry. Uh, just some fuel. All right, and then let's head into the jump. Yeah, so Dr. Lackenstein attests that, like, every time you play, it is a little different in some way or another. Which is exciting. I, I mean, that's the kind of thing I love about games that have, like, you know, very sort of flexible storylines like this. That's kind of what you want. You want it to be, like, not like, okay, I'm going to play the same thing again and again until I perfect it. Instead, you want, like, with this kind of game, what I'm usually looking for is I have a very different experience every time. Each time, the, the story can surprise me. So Lockensee says, I shouldn't be afraid to bribe, especially because the bribes, you're, you're right, are much cheaper uh, than, like, when I was early on in the game, and I wasn't sure how much money I was going to have, I was very nervous about bribing. But you're right, the bribes are, are tend to be pretty cheap. Okay, so we're here, and I think, okay, what was my goal here? I'm pretty sure I was on survey tour. Yeah, and I think that means that it's the wilderness where I need to go. So let's land in the wilderness... And yeah, so here is a mission. Okay, so exploring the wilderness is a mechanic we haven't looked at yet. It's like a lot of other mechanics where it's like you're going from basically from node to node through an exploration path. And at each stage, there's bad and good things that can happen. Um, and you're trying to get to the end without like dying. So here it's showing me here are the things that could happen on my next turn. Um, and so this could be mission success. That's an option. Um, we can repair the ship and siphon some fuel is a thing that could happen. We get some resources could happen. Now, I don't know, I don't, don't have any cargo space, so I don't know if that's good. Or somebody could steal riches from us and we have to fight pirates, or just we have to fight pirates. So I do have the option, reduced exposure when exploring a wild zone, remove a risk card. So somebody in my crew has got a talent that lets me cancel a risk card. So let me cancel that one. And then mission success is the card that we drew. So. We've succeeded. That went better than I expected. So it looks like we spent four days doing this and we succeeded at the mission, which means what happened? We must have obtained whatever we needed to obtain. Not always clear what happens. 
Uh, also, okay, yeah, so survey tour. Um, so we explored the rest, the, the, the jungles and completed a comprehensive survey. And so we need to take, go to the Kale Divide. Okay, so, okay, so we're going to explore the wilderness of a bunch of different places. So we need to go to the Kale Divide next. And that's one jump away. So let's do that. Let's see if there's any place. I'm looking for Luxury Pop. These are all, like, wilderness and stuff. This is a... Yeah, so this place does not have Luxury Pop. So we're going to get out of here. Head back through this jump gate. Oh, Dr. Luxie says, if I want to do some skill cards, I could salvage at that orbital. I didn't actually catch that. Yeah. Okay, I need to I need to take one, oh, another one of those opportunities pretty soon. But right now, let's head through a jump gate. Okay, so it's sending us up to Afkron. Now, this is... So we're still looking for Luxury Pop. Is this Luxury Pop? Just regular old Pop. Okay, so we'll keep our eye out still for Luxury Pop, but this is the wilderness. How are we doing on fuel? We're not doing great on fuel. So let's stop here on the way so that we can get fuel. You gotta pay attention to your fuel, because your ship can move without fuel, but it's slow and risky. So let's buy some fuel, pay wages. Everybody's doing good. Okay, we'll, then we'll go over here to this wilderness zone. Land, and we're going to do another one of these surveys. Okay, so we got a couple of bad things that can happen. I can still reduce exposure. Reduced by crew protection components. Okay, cool. So this is a bad thing that can happen. This is combat. Um, I'm going to try to reduce the automatic bad thing. No, no pirates. Go away. Yes. Okay, so we got some experience, but we didn't get mission success. So we'll try again. And this time I've already used the talent that lets me remove a risk. So I'm hoping that we'll succeed this time. Let's see. Come on, no whammies, no! No! Okay, so we took some damage to some ship components. Let's try again. Okay, so each time you've got a 20% chance of succeeding. This isn't too bad, though. Let's explore. Come on, no whammies, no! Ah! Oh. Okay, we got some resources, but we've had to deposit them in a stash because we have no space in our, in our cargo. Okay. This is all mostly good. Come on. Big money, no whammies, no! Scientific intel. I'm not actually even sure what you do with that. Uh, okay, so this is potentially bad. Come on, big money, no whammies. No! We're getting more intel. I don't know what that's for. So Lock and C says, I hate time lost cards. Time is money in this game. You, yeah, because you, you remember, like, a lot it comes down to whether I can complete these missions within their allotted time. Okay, th we've got a lot of risks here, but... I can reduce exposure again. Um, let's remove that one. I don't know why. Oh no! A bunch of people took damage. Okay. Oh, it's getting riskier and riskier. But 44% success. So I think the chance of drawing this card keeps going up. Oh, come on! Okay, at least I got some gear. A 0x headset, whatever that is. 47% chance now. Come on. Come on. Yes, eliminate the bad ones. Yes! Mission success. Okay. So now we've succeeded. We did the thing they wanted us to do. And we've got stuff in a stash here. So we got to remember we've got a stash here. <laughs> Which I'm not going to remember, but that's fine. Um, oh, by the way, I should auto-train my people, which I can't do with my officers, so let's manually train my officers. Just with their same regular jobs, keeping it simple. Alright, so we're going to want to stop. So as soon as we get through this jump gate, we're going to want to stop somewhere. Oh no! Oh, merchant. Good. 
Uh, demand tribute? No, whatever. We're not going to be mean. Ranith Cord wants to know if I've tried a game called Space Haven. Not that I remember, though it's entirely possible for me to forget things like that. Um, so it looks like we've got... What's around here? Industrial, refinery, orbital station... Okay, this is a lot of... This is an industrial and refinery-focused place. And this place has got a wilderness. Okay, let's... Who's going to offer us medical attention? Doctor. Doctor. Okay, yeah, so let's... None of the doctors are on the way, but we definitely need a doctor because we took damage during that, and I want to make sure I can heal up my crew before we get him into trouble again. So let's land... And buy fuel, pay wages. Oh, they're healthy. Okay, I thought that they had taken some damage, but maybe, you know what? Maybe my doctor negated it or something. That's entirely possible. And it looks like my quartermaster can level up. That's great. Okay, well, that went better than I feared. Let's head over here to this outpost. Okay, so Lockenstein says that that scientific intel that I'm picking up can be traded in at cer certain contacts in exchange for reputation and stuff like that. Okay, so that's good. So, okay, so one thing I'm not doing enough of, probably... So you saw me actually uh, engage with that Spice Runner contact to get this current mission. That was the first time I just tried to get a mission from a random contact. So I maybe need to be doing that more, like building up my contacts in different places, getting my trade permits, that sort of thing. Okay, so these guys just want to fight me. That's my only option. It looks like I've got a decent advantage over them, and I can escape pretty easily. So, sure, let's, let's again, be cautious with our first round. Let's see how well matched we think we are. Okay, we're damaging them more than they're damaging us so far. So I'm going to take the risk of moving in, um, firing my more damaging weapon. And then let's also increase our accuracy. Yeah, these guys are idiots for attacking me. I am way better than them. So now I've got three weapons that are in range. And we'll increase our standard damage with one of my talents. Oh, look at that. Oh, you did not know who you were messing with. You absolutely did not know who you were messing with. Okay. So we don't need to get any closer. I think we're basically good. Oh, guarantees I can advance even further if I want to. Uh, purge a ship of crippling effects. And this... Okay, this helps me offensively, so we'll turn that on. Oh, look at that. Oh, man, below half. Bet you're trying to escape now. Do, do, do. I don't even need to use my talents anymore. Let's just blast the heck out of this guy. Oh, come on, retreat. What is wrong with you people? Oh, this captain. Man, this should be a mutiny. He's restoring morale to the crew. How are you doing that? Okay, they're trying to retreat, but they're f rolling really badly. I think this might be it. Oh, they're using sharp steering. That's what I use to escape. But it's too late. We've ruptured their hull. Oh, so Lockenstein has given me some advice that I'll use in just a second. Let's salvage what we can and leave. Okay, so he's so Lockenstein is pointing out that there is a galactic map that shows where I have missions and things. Uh, so I don't fully know how to read this. Um, so there's little icons. So basically, so this is showing all the different little places that are linked to each other with these jump gates. Um, and so I think where was it that I started? I don't remember now. But I just came from, like, I, I was at the Gaga Pass at one point, I remember, at the Kale Divide. One of these is where the Feyen are centered. But I've forgotten. Might be Star, Wall Star Valley Fissure. 
Yeah, ten House Stalloon systems. Yeah, this is where. Yeah, this is where Prince Caligan Fan lives. So this is where I started, and this is where the the people, the main bosses I'm working for live. Um, and so I'm like, I'm three systems away from them right now. Am I guessing that like, are these icons the icons you're talking about that tell me where there are like missions or contacts or things like that? Ed Blake asks if I've tried to board the enemy before. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't know if my ship has the capability of boarding, actually. So I, I imagine that if you just keep advancing on the enemy, getting closer and closer, boarding becomes an option. Um, but I don't know if I need some kind of special capability on my ship or if boarding is just a thing that any ship can do. So I never attempted it. Um, okay, so for right now, though, we're headed over here. All right, so the wilderness, I believe. Oh, so this, this, ah, okay, so this mission, this target symbol means there's a mission here. Let me look at the galactic map again. Okay, so mission, so so basically this little target symbol means I've got a mission that is sending me here. And so I can sort of see where these places are in relation to each other. Um, I'm not sure, this might mean maybe I've got a contact who could offer me a mission. Maybe that's what this means. I'm not sure. I also don't know what this means. Contacts may sell privy Pruvia blooms. What? The heck is a Pruvia bloom? I think it looks. It'll tell me. Okay, so this means yes, there are contact. I have contacts here. That's what that icon means. I've got an active mission here. That's what the target symbol means. And there's a rumor over here of a radiation storm. Okay, so Lock and Scene says any ship can board at range 1. There are talents that unlock boarding at range 3, or if your ship has a shuttle, you can board at any range. But since I'm using missiles and torpedoes, I generally want to stay back and just pelt them, because that's the range which those are effective. So that's what I've been doing. So I think I think for the build of my ship, I'm doing all right. Okay, so I'm here at the Ursae Outpost. Um, I want to be here. Uh, so let's go to the Wilderness again. And continue our survey tour. So we've got a 30% chance of this card coming up. Um, consequences I can live with. Big money. No whammies. No whammies. Ah, damage to my crew. But medical staff talent allows us to pass a doctor plus resilience test. So it was a near disaster. But because I've got a doctor with a good skill... They prevented the bad thing from happening. That's probably... I wasn't paying attention. That's probably what happened last time to prevent me from dealing with terrible consequences. So let's try this again. Oh, there's a bunch of bad things that can happen here. Scavenger combat. Okay. I don't know if my doctor can keep preventing these types of things. I'm going to prevent this combat. Okay. So we bypass that as well. And now I can't eliminate one, so let's just cross our fingers. The 35% chance! No! Okay, so we failed the check, so now we've actually taken damage to our crew. Let's keep exploring. No! No! Xeno combat! Okay, well, here comes a fight. So, you get to see fights. This is how fights work. Um... Let me... Let me eliminate my crew here. Okay, so let's, let's bring in people who I can spare uh who ideally have good health like this guy he prefers slot four he's a soldier um so so the, this combat is kind of like darkest dungeony i guess it's like a side you know side on view uh turn-based combat where people get to fire at different slots with different abilities um a lot of these folks are my actual like officers which makes me nervous i don't want to put them at risk if i can help it this guy's a Pistolier, he prefers slot one. Does anyone prefer slot two or three? Doesn't look like it. Having the doctor along is actually helpful because she can heal people. Um, and you know what? If I'm, I'm gonna put my life on the line too. Captain Pegasus is gonna show up. And let's fight. All right, so we got a bunch of aliens here. We're gonna fight. Void endurance. Oh, he just knocked us around. So my captain prefers slot four, and she's a slot one, so she probably isn't in the best shape here. So let's um, 
Okay, so I can do field surgery if somebody's injured, but we're not really injured yet. So let's open fire on... Who can we kill the fastest? Uh, I can't... I honestly can't tell. I don't... Is it... It gives me bars for their health. I don't know who has more health or less health than somebody else. I also am not sure what this means. Initiative? So, I'm not... Does high initiative mean they're more dangerous, or does low initiative mean they're more dangerous? I don't know. That wasn't a lot of damage, though. He took a bunch. Um, let's try some burst fire on both guys in the front. Uh, these guys have a lot of resilience. Okay. Let's try some field surgery. Bring this guy's health back. And then let's close range barrage versus pinning shot. So I don't fully understand this. There's a lot of detail. Oh, he's not... No oh, I can only do this from from the front, maybe? So let's try this attack. Okay, we're slowly whittling them down. So usually it's a good move to sort of focus fire on one particular enemy. So, I'm the switch. Oh, to be able to use his better attack. He's slowly whittling this guy down. Let's keep my tank healed. And that guy's healing himself too. Oh, oh, damaging the captain. Let's heal the captain. We do not want to lose our captain. Okay, so yeah, so Lock and Scene says that initiative is basically, it's the... Okay, they will not let this guy be in the position where he can use his best attack, which is which is annoying. Um, come on, almost dead. But yeah, apparently initiative is the cost we pay for our actions. So if, like, I've got 12 initiative, then I use a 10 initiative ability that takes me down to 2, and then I think that... Is it whoever... Whoever has the most initiative gets to go next, maybe? I'm not sure, but I know this guy needs to be healed. Okay, good. They knocked him into the front slot and then nearly killed him. Okay. Welp. Um, okay, so that guy... Okay, this guy takes more damage. Let's heal the front guy again, but maybe he can actually use one of his better abilities. Ah. Oh, stop it. Oh, don't kill this guy. Do not kill this guy. I like him. I put him in danger. I'll feel guilty if he dies. However, his initiative is just really low. I think that their attacks are costing his initiative. No, he's eliminated. No, this was a bad plan. Okay, so she is going to heal the captain. Alright, the captain is gonna... Oh, come on! Wow, this is gonna go very badly. This is going so badly right now. Do I have the ability to... Okay, if I surrender, we're just gonna die. So that's not good. Come on, at least take one of them out. No, stop it. Oh, no! My doctor! No! This is going so badly. We're screwed now. Without the doctor to stay ahead of the... The loss. Oh, the captain! Okay, I think we're screwed. I might have just lost this entire game right now. I don't even know what happens if you get the captain killed in a fight. I guess we'll find out. Ugh. So what happened? Let's look at our crew. Okay, the captain is alive. The doctor is alive. I'm not sure. I don't... 
Looks like the others are alive too. Okay, so am I playing at a difficulty level where where failures like that just get canceled? That's entirely possible. That is entirely possible. Okay, so Dr. Lackensy says on easier levels you can survive. On harder difficulties, it's permadeath. Um, so, okay, that makes sense. So I think I am playing on a lower difficulty level because I'm not ready to be playing this game with really super high stakes. So, awesome. I'm going to try to just train some talents on these characters. Fast getaway? Sure. All right. So... <gasps> that was a little harrowing and actually and I've been I've been doing this for like over an hour now so I should probably take a little break from it so um I think you've seen a lot of the core mechanics though you've seen ship combat you've seen wilderness exploration you've seen you've seen just like crew combat which traditionally has gone better for me than that that was the first time I've actually lost a battle so that was a little scary um and you've seen, you know, buying and selling, arbitrage. You've seen me buying permits from my contacts. You've seen, like, how many different things go on in this game. There's this whole overarching story that you're affecting by your actions, but in subtle ways. So it's like, it feels more like you're immersed in a world that's more complicated than you can possibly understand, just trying to live your little life. And the, and the longer you spend in it, the better you get at understanding what's going on, and the more you, you know, kind of um, feel like you can kind of master, you know, figure out what's happening. And, oh, just a moment. Let me just, sorry, I just got a call from my wife. Uh, it's cool. I do need to go pretty soon, but uh, I was wrapping up the game anyway. So let's uh, switch over here and say goodbye. But uh, well, I was in the middle of a thought, though, I think, or, or maybe I finished it. That basically, I really like this game partly just because, you know, a lot of the times, very complicated games push me away and it takes a lot of effort for me to get into them like project zomboid was that way rimworld was that way and a lot of the time i find that i really love a game after somebody guides me through it and gets me through all of the really difficult parts this game is kind of special because dr lockenstein did not have to walk me through every stage of this game it is extremely complex but they do a great job of giving you an accessible layer to the game that you can understand with you sort of you know minimal practice and then you can discover the complexity and get into the complexity over time as you slowly come to understand how the game works. So I think they've done a really good job of that. Uh, so if you like this kind of game and you sort of love the idea of, of sort of playing one of those like a Star Control 2 scale universe full of just interesting dynamic stories and, and uh, you know, trading and stuff that you can do, like this is that kind of game. And I did, I'm surprised I didn't know it existed before. So thank you, Dr. Lockenstein, for recommending that I play this. Uh, sorry that I have to kind of clear out right now, but that's how it works sometimes so if you how do i not hide behind the black bar i don't know anyway this is the end of the video and i hope you like this game check it out if you think you might